I got to tell you, you nailed it today. Thank you. You nailed it. So you you liked the song when you heard it. I loved the song when I heard it, and I, you know what I, I enjoy with certain people are born to be kind of directors. In your, your case, a producer. Mm -hmm. You have a nice way of getting me to do things. You know, it's nice. I like working with people. Like another guy who was really good at that is David Foster, and of course, he's an amazing oh. producer. Mm -hmm. uh, it just has a nice way of getting the job done without making it feel like work. Yeah. It's just, and yeah. that, that takes a certain kind of a guy to do. And you were helping me out today, getting uh, the best out of me. Well, the song is the vehicle. And Jim Peterick's a wonderful show. Stay tuned. <laughs> Sour notes. Hey, if you weren't great, I wouldn't be working with you. You're right you on. Know, uh, and David, uh, I mean, Bill Champlin said the same thing. Uh, it's just a gentle way of directing. He said, that's the way I do it. Yeah. You, you expect the best and you get it. Uh, little melody things, I don't know if it matters or not, but I'll show you how it was written. What's the first line that you're singing? See the fault, see the photograph. Try your hardest not to cry. Try your hardest not to cry. Hear his voice. Hear his voice. And rejoice. And rejoice. It's the soundtrack it's of the sound, our life. It's the sound, soundtrack of our life. Right. Live is a... That was it, yeah. Uh, li is it lives? It's the soundtrack of our lives. Yeah, that so is correct. It, oh, it's written. You one more time, just you, one, two, three. See the photograph, try your hardest not to cry. Hear the voice and rejoice. It's the soundtrack of our lives. From the back rooms. Great. There was someone that used to produce me that, ah, that sucks, oh. type of thing. Yeah. No. He would oh. just go, no. 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 No, how about, you know, the, that was cool, but this one part was not so cool, but I love that one part. Yeah, there, yeah. You can always rescue something good. He would want us to be strong. Oh, I like that. Want us to be strong. Try it your way, strong. He would want us to be strong. Oh, come on. <laughs> now you're overboard. I broke up a few bits, but I'm getting excited. I, you should be, it's very exciting. <laughs> It's, it's pretty cool. Now, now give me character with a little better pitch. <laughs> I mean, we could pitch correct that, but real men don't pitch correct. All right. Okay, here we go. Keep your chin up and cheer up. He would want us to be strong. That was pretty good. some character. Yeah, man. Little hair on the... Let's take a listen. Loverboy always had a... Our producers were always people that just basically let us do whatever we were doing. He didn't come in to try to change us around. He would just record us doing our thing and then make the odd suggestion here and there. Yeah. And he would look after everybody and stroke a guy's ego if he needed a little stroking. Yeah. And he would just be understanding. He would be the guy you'd go to to talk about parts or lyrics and stuff. Now, who was that guy? Uh, Bruce Fairburn. <laughs> yeah. You did, he worked with one of the best. Yeah. Yeah. The real okay. uh, diverse guy. He was really interesting. He worked with the, the heaviest rock groups in the world. Yeah, but was a soccer coach. Plus, yeah. he was so organized. I mean, he had the day's agenda on a chalkboard yeah, for he was us. Good. I, I I mixed an album with him, the first album, first first Survivor record. And then you strike things off as you get them done. Yeah, yeah. I mean that was organized. I'm not that organized. I, I have it in my head, but I don't have it on a chalkboard. Yeah. The second engineer was a, someone called Bob Rock. Not a yeah. bad team. Me too. Right? Yeah, he's, he's was our guy too. Yeah. Now, week working for a weekend was that team. Yeah. Well, what a team up there, Little Mountain. Yeah. You know? That was a heck of a place. I remember going down just one day. On one side was Aerosmith, and the other side was Motley Crue. <laughs> there was two studios. Yeah. And we used to share the bathrooms. So I'd get called in to maybe sing on a Motley Crue record when they get everybody together for the chance. Yeah, yeah. You know, like... Uh, everybody's singing, girls, 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 that kind right, of thing. Right, right, right. Oh, you know, we'd go to the, take a bathroom break and run into Steven Tyler in the hallway. You know, it's like pretty cool stuff, you know. Rock and roll to the max. A lot of people tried to figure out where Loverboy recorded. And it turned out that that became the hottest studio in the 80s. 
Was and that your first album you've done there? Yeah, first and second. The first album and was called Get Lucky? No, that's the second. That was the second one. The first one was just Lover Boy. And was there, was there a hit on that first one? Uh, we had uh, The Kid, right? The Kid Is Hot Tonight and Turn Me Loose. Yeah. Oh my God. Turn Me Loose is, is epic. It's epic. It's one of those songs that is so simple, so powerful. I wrote that on the bass guitar, similar to some of your guitars. I've got right. this old bass guitar that I, it was a hollow body, and I bought it in, uh, it was in an antique store. Yeah. And I saw it sitting and I said, I gotta give that guitar a home. And it was hollow body so you could play the bass on it and you could hear it in the room without plugging it in. Yeah. That's why I like playing it all the time. And I just started, boom, 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 boom. I played it so many times, Paul looked at me and said, you play that one more time, I'm gonna either kill you and we're going to write a song yeah, with that right, lick in it. Right. And so because I'm a drummer, mm -hmm. I would get people to come in and say, play this on the bass, and I'm going to do the drums, and yeah. I'll come up with some parts. And, and we finally put uh, Turn Me Loose together, and uh, it became one of our biggest, most popular songs. Now, who came up with the uh, the title? I did. Yeah. yeah. And then Paul and I worked on the rest of it together. Jimmy Jameson. Talk about him. What a sweetheart. He's too sweet. I was Kathy and I's good, good friend. We we loved Jimmy. Jimmy had a way of making me smile. He used to do this thing where he'd go, Mike Reno. You kill me, brother. You know, just with that <laughs> that Mississippi, that uh, like uh, Memphis accent of his. Yeah. I got a really funny story. I, I did radio for a year. And during that year, I also went out and did a lot of concerts. And I did some charity work. And we were, Jimmy and I were doing a charity in uh, Baton Rouge for his good buddy, Scott Enns. Scott Enns. Enns. And... Uh, he had us come into town, and I told Jimmy, I said, you know, <clears throat> when we get together, uh, my radio station has given me this microphone that has like a three gig stick in it, and I can record a nice conversation, and we can play it on the radio when I get back. So we get together, and we so we put it off and put it off. Finally, during this weekend, we were together. He finally sits down at the table, and I sit down at the table, and I turn the microphone on, and I say, Hey Jimmy, I'm I'm sitting here with Jimmy Jameson, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit. I just want to find out how you're doing, Jimmy. And I put the microphone over to him, and he went, "Not so good." <laughs> and I went, "Okay, thank you." That was Jimmy Jameson, <laughs> and uh, of the famous group Survivor. And uh, yeah. thanks very much, Jim. <laughs> you know that was the end of the interview. He's not this, so good. That was his sense of humor. I know. You know, he was had a dry sense. I loved the guy. Oh, he was a practical joke. Funny. He uh, was a practical. Uh, he used to drop his uh, kid off. The kid would go to, to buy something at 7-Eleven, and he'd take off. And the kid would come out, well, where's my dad? Well, who knows him better than you, Tim? You worked with him for many, oh, many, many god. years. He was a practical joker. What a find when you found him. Oh my god. Well, we we lost Dave Bickler. He just lost his voice, and he knew he couldn't continue. Now what do we do? You know, we had um, two albums that weren't real big. But they were well received, especially you know the radio stations. Critically, they didn't sell a lot. But how do you change singers? Actually, we had three albums. Excuse really, me. Really, that's one of the hardest things in the music business to do. I think is to change a singer. I, it, only oh, yeah. a few bands have ever done it successfully. Ever done it? Uh, I got to take this interview. Why don't you uh, talk more about Jimmy and and uh, the shows you've did, done with them? Okay, we'll do. Hey, we're gonna do. Uh, Hello. He's doing a real interview. I love that. It's the old day call him. Yeah. I don't like anybody to get my real phone number. <laughs> <laughs> the last time I saw Jimmy was at a Loverboy concert mm -hmm. just outside okay. Memphis at one of the casinos. And he phoned me up, he says, is there any chance I can get uh, 
me and my daughter and her husband in to the show and his girlfriend and stuff. I said, absolutely. We came on stage and I could see Jimmy. He was only about 12 feet away. And we're doing the show and he, he kept looking at me like, don't ask me up, you know. It's that kind of, because he's kind of a bit shy yeah. on the don't ask me up. And also not every band can jam with people without, you know, doing it, uh, practice in advance. Yeah. Cause a lot of people, so my guys were never really that big on having just people jump up. But one of the few people that did jump up was Alex Lizardwood. Yeah. Um, Santana. One, and Kathy's sister. And they still talk about your sister as mm -hmm. being one of the best she, things. She's a singer also? The, the whole family sings so, Yeah. And uh, Yeah, she's a bit of a freak of nature, that one. And yeah. Jimmy was... My baby sister, yeah. she got everything. Uh. Yeah, she's wonderful. But Jimmy was at this, at this show just outside of Memphis. I could see he was telepathically asking me not to invite him on stage. <laughs> so I took a break in the middle and I brought up Jimmy's name and I just got everybody in Memphis to kind of applaud the fact that Jimmy Jameson from Survivor's here tonight with his family. And I'm not gonna ask you up to sing tonight, Jim. I'm gonna let you just sit there and enjoy the show. And he went, Mike, I love you, brother. Right, yeah. you, the whole crowd could hear it. He yeah. got a standing ovation for that. Uh. And after the show, he came backstage and he was just so complimentary to the band. I gotta tell you, he, I, I really love Jimmy Jameson. I just, it's just gonna be so sad <laughs> to have to continue on without him. He's well, a great yeah. guy. You know, I told you the story of, of writing that song for, uh, for Fergie. I was, you know, kind of being the brave guy after I heard he died. I wasn't able to make the funeral. And then one day I put in his video, a Follow Your Heart, the song that, that I wrote for one of his albums. And I saw that countenance, the blue eyes and the sincerity and just all of a sudden I, I broke down. I let myself feel it, finally. Yeah. Karen was sitting there with me and um, she was tearing up too. And at that moment, that's when I went to the piano, which is right next to my TV room. And I wrote the chords and most of the melody for "You're in Our Hearts," and it, it was coming from up there, you know. And you told me that story. A lot of times we get these co-writes, yeah. you know, and, and and God doesn't even ask for ASCAP checks. That's you know? true. He's BMI. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I heard this um, almost a Gregorian chant thing in my hoo 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 and I knew that that was really cool. It had this reverence to it. When Bill Champlin added his parts, it caught me by surprise because I'd heard the tracks before Bill put his parts on. Did he come up with that or was it a shared idea? Cause parts he put on there are really classically they're almost like Chicago parts and well he's yeah. a big part of the group Chicago no I had nothing to do with that you let Bill go just like I let you go you just let him do his thing and well all that Chicago stuff and Earth Wind and Fire stuff that was all him and arranged by him right you know he wrote co-wrote after the love is gone he arranged those vocals he's brilliant yeah. I just sent him the track he did the rest oh that's <laughs> awesome and then um, I gotta say bringing you in this was another meant to be moment. Victorious! Oh! Whoa! I'm gonna make a stand! Oh yeah! Being together, I think Victorious. in times of this really helps. Being people, being together and sharing the feelings. And sometimes life is tough, you know? And by the way, you sang your butt off today on Jimmy's song. Thanks, my friend. I'm Did you enjoy watching it. your your man? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was just amazing. So thank you. That was a good one. Good sweat. I got a good sweat going yeah. for that one. Too. Good. Well, now we're going to get a good drink going on. Blood, sweat, and tears. Huh? <laughs>